I understand we have a whole new group of exciting young stars, but what some of the older players are still doing is unprecedented. From time to time, we have seen guys remain undoubtedly elite in their mid to late 30s, like Kobe pre Achilles or Kareem, but right now we have three top 10 level guys at ages 35, 36, and 39, along with a guy who's 34 who has been on a tear recently and has put together a solid all-star kind of season. Dedication, attention to detail, and modern medical care has afforded us an extension on some legendary careers. I like to bring awareness to things that should be more appreciated as they are happening, not just after the fact. So today we're going to be going through the seasons of four older legends and just how unreal their performance is. Before we get into this, if y'all could like the video, sub the channel, and hit that noti bell, I would really, really appreciate it. It would help me out a ton, smaller NBA YouTuber trying to grow. And without further ado, let's get right into the video. I'm going to start off with the obvious one that hasn't been taken for granted as much, LeBron James. While yes, his longevity is definitely being appreciated, I wanted to take a moment to re-emphasize just how insane what he's doing is. This man is in year 21 and is one of three players putting up 25-7-7 and -7 alongside Luka and Jokic. What he is doing is unprecedented, and while I know it can be annoying for some how much it's brought up, there's definitely more than good reason. Another crazy part of LeBron's season is his three-point shooting improvement, which I am considering making an entire video on altogether. When he loses a step compared to his younger self, he just simply becomes a 40% three-point shooter. His ability to still control and take over a game when he feels like it at his advanced age is just unreal. I mean, we really saw it in the second half of that Clippers game. It's starting to feel like Tom Brady when it's like, when will it stop? We can't use simple logic here, but we'd have to assume he'd be out of top 10 range by like age 42, right? Or will he be? LeBron James is the anomaly of anomalies, and despite how polarizing he is to some people, for whatever reason, we need to appreciate this because love him or hate him, the NBA as we know it will not be the same when he's gone. Before I get into the two guys in this thumbnail that definitely didn't surprise you, I want to talk about someone who really hasn't gotten any recognition. DeMar DeRozan is 34 years old and in year 15 and is still playing at an all-star level. Despite a bit of a slow start, over the past two months we've really started to see vintage DeRozan in Chicago. From the start of the season until the end of January, DeMar DeRozan was averaging 22, 4, and 5 with 1.5 turnovers on 47% from the field, 34% from deep, and 84% from the line for a true shooting of 56.7%. Now this isn't even bad per se, especially for a 34 year old, and this only emphasizes DeRozan's longevity, but as of late, DeMar has looked like a completely different player from the start of the year. Since the start of February, DeMar DeRozan has averaged 27, 5, and 5 with 1.5 turnovers on 49, 34, 90 for a true shooting of 62.2%. DeMar has improved across the board box score wise recently while also maintaining his turnovers and leading the Bulls to a 500 record in these games. While 500 isn't great, when you realize the Bulls are still three games below 500, you can at least see improvement. DeMar has had a number of great games in this stretch, but I want to key in on his 46-point outburst against the Pacers a few days ago. We really saw vintage DeMar when he was playing with the pace of the Pacers. On March 13th, DeMar DeRozan put up 46 points, 9 rebounds, and 3 assists on 15 of 24 from the field and 15 of 17 from the line for a true shooting of over 73%. DeMar took over this game down the stretch, scoring 18 in the fourth and overtime on six for nine shooting nice while guys like bron katie and steph might still be the top of the top guys like demar derozan are also showing us great longevity in the modern nba he is still playing at an all-star level and has really turned it up recently and his mid-range game is so pure and pleasing to watch speaking of pure mid-range games that are pleasing to watch another guy defying father time and the often devastating achilles injury is kevin durant before him, Dominique Wilkins was pretty much the only star of note to recover from an Achilles tear and really return to his elite level. KD is having a great season even by his standards at age 35. This season, KD is averaging 28-7-5 on 53% from the field, 42% from deep, and 82% from the line for a true shooting of just over 63%. These numbers are ridiculous for anyone, let alone a 35-year-old who tore his Achilles. KD is playing at an elite level still, and with how much of his game is relying on jumpers, it begs the question, when will he stop? We just can't use normal logic anymore. He will inevitably slow down year over year, but I really think he could be at least a 25 a night guy deep into his 30s. Despite cooling down a bit over the past few games, KD recently had a ridiculous four game stretch against some elite defenses that I would like to highlight. In four games against the Nuggets, Raptors, Celtics, and Cavs, KD averaged 38, 7, and 5 on 54, 47, 83 for a true shooting of 64.5%. The Nuggets have the 10th best defense, the Celtics have the second, and the Cavs have the third. 
The Raptors are a pretty low ranked defense, but funnily enough, that's probably the worst game of the four. The worst game being 35 on 11 for 19, by the way. Devin Booker has also only played in one of these games, which will obviously open up more shots, but will also make for tougher shots with the increased defensive attention. The whole stretch was insane, but I want to key in on KD's 45 point performance against Boston. On March 9th, Kevin Durant poured in 45, 10, and 6 on 69.2% from the field and 57.1% from deep. While he did have six turnovers, this was still an unbelievable display of straight buckets. KD did all he could to help the Suns beat the NBA's best without Booker, but unfortunately it wasn't enough as Phoenix fell to Boston 117 to 107. Kevin Durant is one of the dynamic scorers of all time, and watching him still compete at this level halfway through his 30s is unreal. He gets a lot of flack, and I can't say I haven't participated at times, but KD is truly a special talent who in part defines a generation. Last, but certainly not least, we have the new 36-year-old Wardell Stephen Curry. I have no clue why to this day, but I became a Steph fan in the 2012-13 season and never looked back. Him being 36 makes me sad, but the way he is still performing doesn't. I always figured Steph would be a good player deep into his 30s due to his shooting, but no one knew how good. Despite a bit of a shaky start to the month of March, Steph is still playing at an all-NBA level at age 36. The Warriors were struggling without Draymond Green, they are 23-17 with him and 11-14 without him this season. But since his return and Andrew Wiggins' progression to the mean, they are becoming a team no one wants to see. As I said, as of late, Steph hasn't been phenomenal, but I have no doubt he'll get it together, and despite this, he is still having a phenomenal season. This season, Stephen Curry is averaging 27-4-5 and five on 45% from the field, 41% from deep on just over 12 attempts, and 92% from the line for a true shooting of 61.8%. While it might not be the utter ridiculousness of near 43% on over 11 attempts from deep from last year or his unreal 2021 season, Steph is still playing at an elite level at this stage in his career. He is returning from injury tonight against the Lakers, and if you happen to be watching this before that game, please watch it. These are the two pillars of a generation, and you never know when their last matchup could be at this point. It may seem like it should happen a few more times, and it might, but KD and LeBron didn't face off for like a half decade. I fully expect Steph and Bron to steal the show like they did in their overtime nail biter a little while ago. That game, and hopefully this game coming up, are the pinnacle of what I am talking about. These guys are still able to go back and forth like they used to in 2024, and unfortunately, before you know it, they'll be gone. I don't want to get too doom and gloom, but this is my main objective with this video. We are all fans of a team or players or both, but that shouldn't always prevent us from appreciating greatness. There's plenty of people that hate both Steph and LeBron together, let alone separately, but no matter what, they are the magic and bird for my generation, and what they have done and continue to do is amazing. This is kind of out of left field, but the retirement of Philadelphia Eagles legends Jason Kelsey and Fletcher Cox made me realize that my childhood is slowly fading. I have made a conscious effort this season to watch namely Steph and LeBron, but also others as much as possible. It's not even like we have to watch a sad shell of themselves either. We are still afforded the opportunity to watch guys perform like they have been for a decade and a half or more, and that is special. That's going to wrap this one up. If y'all enjoyed it, please like it up, sub the channel, hit that noti bell, comment down below. If you're still watching right now, I don't know, man, comment headset. I'm holding my headset right now. Uh, I rock with y'all heavy. You know, comment your thoughts about the video. You know, your thoughts. You know, I, don't, I don't know, man. Hopefully, you know, g gave someone a new perspective on something because, you know, these guys are going to be gone soon. And it's going to be really, really tough. And it's going to be tough. Again, I said earlier in the video, the NBA is never going to be the same when LeBron goes. And that's just a fact. More or less, like, again, you know, I, th there, are, there are some older people on YouTube. But for a lot, a lot of people, they don't know what the NBA without LeBron looks like. Like, even for a 25-year-old or even a 28-year-old. Like, you know, like, again, how much you, you know, I, again, I, you know, you remember some stuff from when you were your small childhood. But a lot of people in and around, you know, even up to the late 20s, like, they don't know what the NBA without LeBron really, really looks like. And that's kind of a crazy, it's, it's a little bit scary, but in this moment right now, we just need to appreciate them. And that's really, you know, that's my objective with a lot of these videos, just to make people appreciate what's happening right now. Not look, I mean, you know, I'm going to make some past videos, you know, definitely looking back on stuff that should be more appreciated from the past. But my main objective with this one is just, man, just, just appreciate it. You know, again, right. I have my reservations about some of these guys and, you know, like hey, everyone does, you know, I mean, uh, unless you're, you know, if you're a Steph fan, you probably don't like LeBron. If you're a LeBron fan, you probably don't like Steph. But the bottom line is these guys are ridiculous and still going at it. That's officially going to wrap it up. I always do my little ramble at the end of the video. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.